Today we're going to be reading By Any Other Name by Santha Rama Rao. You've already read the first few sections in your class, so today we're going to be starting with section 7. I'm going to go ahead and read the section aloud, then I'll ask you to pause and write your annotations. When I say annotations, I mean I want you to circle the words that are unknown to you, make a connection, ask a question, and write your main takeaway. Let's begin. Section 7. At school, we rested for a short time, then we were expected to play games. During the hot part of the afternoon, we played indoors. And after the shadows had begun to lengthen and the light breeze of the evening had come up, we moved outside to the wide courtyard. I had never really understood the system of competitive games. At home, whenever we played tag or guessing games, I was always allowed to win because, mother used to say to Pramila, she is the youngest and we have to allow for that. I had often heard her say it, and it seemed quite reasonable to me, but the result was that I had no idea what winning meant. When we played tag that afternoon at school, in accordance with my training, I let one of the small English boys catch me, but was naturally rather confused when the other children did not let me catch them. I ran about for what seemed like hours without ever catching anyone, until it was time for school to close. Much later, I learned that my attitude was called not being a good sport, and I stopped allowing myself to be caught. But it was not for years that I really learned how the game worked. Press pause and make your annotations. Then press play again to read the next section with me. Section eight. When I saw our car come up to the school gate, I broke away from my classmates and rushed toward it yelling, Mother! Mother! It seemed like forever since I had seen her that morning, a wrinkled, loving figure in her white cotton sari, giving me dozens of urgent and useless instructions on how to be a good girl at school. Pramila followed more calmly, and she told me on the way home never to do that in front of the other children. When we got home, we went straight to Mother's room to have tea with her. And I immediately climbed onto the bed and bounced gently up and down on the springs. Mother asked how we had liked our first day at school. I was so pleased to be home and to have left that strange Cynthia behind that I had nothing whatever to say about school, except to ask what apple meant. But Pramila told Mother about the classes and added that in her classes they had weekly tests to see if they had learned their lessons well. I asked, what's a test? Pramila said, you're too small to have them. You won't have them in your class for years. She also told Mother, in an aside, that we should take sandwiches to school the next day. Not, she said, that she minded, but they would be simpler for me to handle. The whole lovely evening, I didn't think about school at all. I sprinted barefoot across the lawns with my favorite playmate, the cook's son, to the stream at the end of the garden. We argued in our usual way, waded in the warm water under the lime trees, and waited for the night to bring out the smell of the flowers. I listened with fascination to his scary stories until I was too frightened to cross the garden alone in the semi-darkness. The maid found me shouted at the cook's son, scolded me, hurried me into supper. It was an entirely usual and wonderful evening. Go ahead and pause, write your annotations, and then press play when you're ready for the next section. Section 10. It was a week later, the day of Pramila's first test, that our lives changed suddenly. I was sitting at the back of my class in my usual daydreaming way, only half listening to the teacher. I had started a rather guarded friendship with the girl with the braids, whose name turned out to be Nalini, Nancy in school. The three other Indian children were already friends. Even at that age, it was clear to all of us that friendship with the English or Anglo Indian kids was out of the question. During the class, Nalini and I would draw pictures and show them to each other secretly. 
The door opened sharply and Pramila marched in. At first, the teacher smiled at her in a kindly and encouraging way and said, Now you're Cynthia's sister. Pramila didn't even look at her. She stood with her feet planted firmly apart and spoke directly to me. Get up, she said. We're going home. I didn't know what had happened, but I was aware that it was a disaster of some sort. I rose obediently and started to walk, walk towards my sister. Bring your pencils and your notebook, she said. I went back for them, and together we left the room. The teacher started to say something just as Pramila closed the door, but we didn't wait to hear what it was. In silence, we left the school grounds to walk home. Then I asked Pramila what was wrong. All she would say was, we're going home for good. It was a tiring walk for a child of five and a half, and I dragged along behind Pramila with my pencils growing sticky in my hand. I can still remember looking at the dusty ground and the tangles of thorns in the ditches by the side of the road, smelling the trees and wondering whether we would ever reach home. It was nearing the hottest time of the day and the road was almost empty. I walked more and more slowly and shouted to Pramila from time to time, wait for me, with increasing crankiness. Go ahead and press pause. Make your annotations on section 10. And then press play when you're ready to move on. Section 11. She spoke to me only once, and that was to tell me to carry my notebook on my head because of the sun. When we got to our house, the maid was just taking a tray of lunch to mother's room. She immediately started a long, worried questioning about what are you children doing back here at this hour of the day. Mother looked very startled and very concerned and asked Pramila what had happened. Pramila said, we had our first test today. And she made me and the other Indians sit in the back of the room with a desk between each one. Mother said, why was that, darling? She said it was because Indians cheat, Pramila added. So I don't think we should go back to that school. Mother looked very distant and was silent a long time. At last she said, of course not, darling. She sounded displeased. We all shared her lunch and afterward, I was sent off to my bedroom for a nap. I could hear Mother and Pramila talking through the open door. Mother said, do you suppose she understood all that? Pramila said, I shouldn't think so. She's a baby. Mother said, well, I hope it won't bother her. Of course, they were both wrong. I understood it perfectly, and I remember it all very clearly. But I put it happily away because it had all happened to a girl named Cynthia, and I never was really particularly interested in her. Go ahead and press pause. Write your takeaways, your connections, and circle the unknown words.